mice and ants and flies. Oh my. I can make a joke about that because I'm from Kansas. <laughs> not lions and tigers and bears but it is pesky little rodents and pests that you will have to deal with when you're on the road in your RV whether you're full-time part-time or just a weekender and in today's Real Talk Tuesday we're going to talk about how we have tackled that over the last two years what kinds of pests we've had where we had them and how we got rid of them I'm gonna start with the most disgusting, in my opinion, and that is mice. Now, thankfully, knock on wood, I don't have any wood to knock on. We have actually not had an infestation of mice in our rig yet, but I know there are lots of people that do encounter that of no fault of theirs, just simply because of the place that they're parking at. However, we have had incidences in my van. Uh, up underneath inside the engine of the van we have some shredded wires from some mice and I also had some in the vehicle itself which was pretty disgusting to find out that I had been driving around with them so this is embarrassing and gross and real <laughs> It's a problem I'm sure everybody has dealt with at one point or another, but it seems that we have a rodent problem. That's a Nerf bullet. Where did you find that Nerf bullet? Under the trailer. Where's the other one? Yeah, what's that? Oh, the bitten parts. Thankfully, we don't have mice inside the RV that we know of or that we're aware of. There's no evidence of it inside, but there's evidence under the trailer, around the trailer, and inside my van, unfortunately. There are a ton of crumbs in my van. I will be honest, I have a messy van, uh, so I'm not that surprised. It's just, it's still gross. But luckily we've never had one inside our rig yet, fingers crossed. But here are some ideas on how you can keep them out of your rig. You might have noticed that some people like to put lights underneath their RV and we often, we wondered what that was all about in the beginning. You put a light under your RV, it kind of helps to scare the critters away so they're less likely to get up into your rig. It also helps if you have a covered underbelly, but if you don't, there's still other ways that you can keep the mice at bay from getting inside your RV. So one of the tips that I learned was that in the very middle of the day when the sun is the brightest, one thing that you can do is go around and look and see if you can see any daylight poking through some of the nooks and crannies of your rig. Uh, a really popular spot might be where your slide comes in and out. There has been an instance where like the flap on the outside um, got a little stuck and so there was a piece, there was a space open right there and insects were able to get in through that and mice as you know mice can get through very small spots it's really hard when you have kids but try to keep the your space as clean as possible try to make sure that you're cleaning up after your dinner and meal messes or snack messes and keep your food in airtight containers in our pantry we have several containers that house our food like we have a cereal container and like we call it a salty box which is sometimes pretzels sometimes chips it's sometimes crackers um, and we have a box for like our spaghetti and anything that's an open container that you would buy in the grocery store that you would open and then just roll back up make sure that you put that inside something that things can't get into to keep it safe from both mice and certain insects. There are certain smells that mice apparently don't like. We love essential oils. Peppermint is a really great one. You could put it on like a cotton ball and stick it in some corners of your rig or you can do like us because I'm sometimes lazy, surprise. You just put a few drops here and there around like doorways and such. You can also use dryer sheets. That's another one that is supposedly a good deterrent. I like to put dryer sheets in our bags of laundry. You could also put them in your closet to keep them out of your closet and out of your clothes. And finally, you can use Irish Spring soap. Yes, we're told it actually works and we have used it. We bought a big package of it. We have put it under the hood in my car when my car was sitting there for a little while to try to deter mice from getting up underneath it. You can chop it up and place it in different places inside your RV. 
and thankfully I actually really enjoy that smell. You could also put it underneath your rig if you wanted to do that or near the tires so that you kind of deter the mice from going up inside the RV. We've encountered mice in two different places. Both times it had to do with my car. First time was in Columbia, Missouri over the winter time. It was very cold outside and my car sat for a while, for like a week or, or more, and where we didn't go anywhere or we used John's truck in the snowstorms and such. And they found a nice little warm home up inside my engine casing and, and such. So they uh, did wreak some havoc there, but they didn't get inside the van at that point. And then in Phoenix, when we were out in the desert, we saw a ton of these little tiny like desert mice. And uh, we had a couple of them get up inside of my van. And they're so small that they were able to get up underneath the storage bin, underneath the pilot chairs in the back seat and build a nest. So we had about five or six of them living in a storage bin, unaware to us. The only reason we, we eventually discovered it was that I found some droppings on like the door. When we discovered droppings, we went and took my van for like a serious clean out. We vacuumed everything. We opened up every compartment and that is when we found them. I never saw them while I was driving or while the kids, while we were getting in and out of the vehicle. Flies have been a huge issue for us in the desert. That is where we encountered them the most, specifically in Tonopah, Arizona at Saddle Mountain BLM. And if y'all have stayed there before, you know what I'm talking about. The flies are horrendous there. We had a couple of ways of dealing with their flies. Uh, there have been some people that like to put a penny inside a bag of water and tape it on the outside of the doors of their rig. We've never tried this. If you've tried it, comment below and tell us if it works because we've just never tried it and it looks very interesting. What we have done is mostly just use fly tape. That seems to be the most, the easiest way to collect the flies and get them out of our house. I know that John really wants a bug assault, but I'm just worried that the bug assault will just leave so much salt in our rig that it won't be worth it. <laughs> but there are a couple of other things that you can do, and that is, uh, number one, you can get, make sure that your trash can has a lid. Ours does not. It did have a lid at one point, but it doesn't anymore. But having a lid on your trash can can help. Also making sure that there's no food left in your um, sink or on your counters that will help a lot. The gnats tend to come in through the screen. Our screen doesn't seem like it's abnormally large but there's these little tiny gnats that we've had two problems. One in the Pacific Northwest and one here in North Carolina in the Blue Ridge Mountains here. Both are micro rainforests and both have um, brought with them a certain amount of bugs and they're not like terrible, but they are these tiny little gnats that come in through the screen. Those are flies or some sort of little green bugs everywhere. Everywhere. So one thing that we've discovered is that you can make your own like do-it-yourself insect repellent with um, like peppermint oil and lemongrass and um, some distilled water and such and alcohol. I'll put a, a recipe in the description for you, but basically you shake it all up in a bottle and you spray your screens with it. And it does help deter them from coming in through your screens. And again, you'll want to look and make sure you have no gaps anywhere where they are able to come through, like any um, holes in your screens or anything like that where they might be coming through in addition to just the tiny little screen windows. You guys are gonna laugh. Another thing that we've used on flies before is our handy dandy dust buster. Uh, it's just a handheld vacuum and it works really well. So it's kind of gross, but it does actually help when you have a lot in your house to just go around and vacuum them up. I don't know if I should admit that. It was a pretty big problem. Moving on to the last one, which is ants. So we've noticed a couple of uh, pests, you might say, in the old windy. Uh, so we've had some ants that Kristen has spotted by your bed. <laughs> Not that one either. That doesn't count as a pest this time. I'm gonna look into our basement as I did see a little trail of them the other day. And let's see if we can find any. Oh, Philip, 
Oh, oh, oh. They're inside the balls. We have had spiders off and on, but never a lot of spiders. I really, we really haven't had a ton of spiders in our rig, uh, but we have had ants. Hello, Blue Ridge Mountains. They have given us ants. So for the first time, I have gnats around my head. For the first time in two years of traveling, we have had to deal with ants. They were coming up through there where the water um, goes into the rig. It's actually, there's a, the basement door is right there next to it. And they were coming in through there and going into my room and ending up right next to my bed, which as you can imagine, was not cool at all. So we did go out and get some little tarot traps. They are just like have a little sweet liquid inside and they, the ants go in and they can't come out or they, they can and then it takes, they takes them to their colonies. I don't really know exactly how it works, but they do work really well. But aside from that, there's another method that is a totally natural method that you can use and it is called diatomaceous earth. And I've heard of this before. I researched it back when we were living in Colorado and we're dealing with bugs at our house and I just never followed through with it, but it seemed like a good time to try it out. Diatomaceous earth is like a fine white powder. It's like fossilized diatoms or however you say that. It breaks down the exoskeleton of the insects and it dehydrates them, which is kind of gross to think about, but uh, the bugs cannot get through that barrier. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through any place that is connected to my rig. So the tires, the um, sewer hoses, the power line, um, even the propane tank area up in the front. I'm going to sprinkle this diatomaceous earth around these areas so that bugs cannot get past that barrier. And we're gonna find out if that actually keeps the ants out. And I will let you know. This is the diatomaceous earth that I picked up at Walmart for about, I think it was like 10 bucks. It's a four pound bag. There's a ton in here. I, I won't need near that much but it'll be nice to have on hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle some of this around the outside of my RV at any place that it, it has a potential for a bug to like find its way into anything that's touching the ground, essentially. Uh, one quick side note, I did read online that you can actually use this, it's safe for pets, so you can actually use it to help prevent ticks and fleas by essentially using some of this powder and like mix and, and kind of rubbing it into their fur so that it like, just it's like dust in their fur essentially um, and you can use that as a natural remedy to keep ticks and fleas away we've not tried this yet but we might consider it because ticks have been an issue here for sure oh yeah it's like really fine That's all I've got for you today. I hope that this has been informative. In the two years that we've been traveling, we really haven't had a huge problem that we couldn't overcome. So these are just a few ideas for you. If you've got more ideas, leave them in the comments below. We're pretty big on trying to use natural remedies most for the most part, especially since we live in such a tight, confined space. So we don't use a lot of like ant sprays and insect sprays and that kind of thing, just because we don't want to inhale those fumes inside the RV. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the like button and the notification bell so that you can get notified when we pop new videos up. We post on Sundays and Tuesdays and occasionally an extra blooper reel here and there. And if you'd like to become a member of our coffee club, you can check that out up here or at the end of the video. All right, thanks guys, have a great day, bye.